Hello everyone, this is Ujwal Gandhi from spatialthoughts.com. Today's video is a tutorial on how to use the Open Route Service API to compute a distance matrix. Many of you who have taken my Python Foundation for Spatial Analysis class would know how to compute the distance between two locations. So you have a source and a destination and you want to compute the driving distance between those. And Open Route Service API provides a simple API to compute the driving directions between those and you can get a distance as well as the driving route between that. But what if you wanted to compute the driving distance between many sources and many destinations? Uh, so let's say you have 100 locations and 100 destinations and you want to compute the distances between them. Uh, or maybe you have just one location, but you have thousands of destinations. How do you compute the distance between them? And this can be accomplished using the Open Route Service Distance Matrix API. Most mapping APIs do provide a distance matrix API, which is widely used by logistics companies. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to use the distance matrix API, and then we'll apply it to solve a problem where we'll take about uh, 100 addresses in a city, and then we have locations of all the health centers in the city, and we want to find the nearest health center to every address. And that requires us to first find the distance from every address to every health center, and then pick the minimum distance. So let's get started. So here's, a, so here's a Colab notebook that we'll be using. The link to the notebook is given in the video description. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Colab, uh, it is just a hosted Jupyter notebook, and you can just run your code without having installing anything. So first, we're just going to open and connect. So this is uh, going to connect it to us uh, to a backend running Python, and we're going to run the setup part. So I'm going to run the first few blocks, which is just going to do the setup. Here we are installing the required libraries, mainly GeoPandas. Uh, we are importing the required libraries and then we're going to download the data. So this comes uh, in form of two shapefiles. One is uh, address points, which are location of about uh, 100 locations in a city. And then the adult mental health providers, this is uh, the health centers in a city. And this is the data from Washington, op Washington DC open data portal in the US. And we have got this data. So as you can see, our setup blocks have finished running. We have installed and imported the libraries. We created these two folders in the Colab machine where we are running a notebook. And if you open the, the directory, you'll see that you have two folders here. There's a folder with data containing these two zip files and an empty output folder where we're gonna write our output. If you're running this on Jupyter locally on your own machine, you just need to uh, download the data and put it in these folders for the notebook to work. All right. The next step, we're going to uh, get an ORS API key. You need to go to Open Route Service, uh, sign up for an API key, and then uh, get your key from the dashboard. Open Route Service API is a free uh, service, but you still need to sign up for a key. So I'm going to show you where to get the key. Once you go to Open Route Service, you can log in. And once you log in, you're going to see your dashboard, and you're going to get the key from here. So I'm going to copy this key and paste it here. And once you uh, paste it, make sure you run this. And now you have this variable OIS API key, which contains your key. All right, so let's get started. Uh, we're gonna use GeoPandas to read those two files first. We are constructing a path to the file on our local system. Uh, GeoPandas can read the zipped shift files directly, so we don't need to unzip it first. And we're gonna see what this health GDF looks like. So this is a GeoData frame of about, uh, 13 uh, health uh, facilities in the city. And these are the X, Y coordinates. And this is the geometry column. And this the uh, CRS for this is 4326 lat long. And we can see that here. Next, we're gonna read the, the address point uh, shape file. And this is about 100 randomly selected addresses uh, for the city. And this is for demonstration. If you have your own source and destinations, you can just use your shape file. Any format of the shape files would work. You only need a unique column, which contains the, the IDs, which will be used by the API. All right. So next, we're going to just uh, visualize the, uh, the data. So I'm going to open a code cell, and we're going to uh, use the matplotlib to visualize this. Uh, if you uh, take taken my uh, Python for mapping and data visualization class, you know I like to follow a certain template which makes working with matplotlib much easier. So we're gonna first use the matplotlib uh, subplots. I'm gonna create a subplot 
and this is going to give us a figure and an x an axis and we're going to set the figure size next we're going to say set size inches and let's just make it a 10 inch by 10 inch uh, figure and next we're going to take each of our geodata frames and plot it so i'm going to first plot the address and we're going to say take our address gdf plot it on this axis color blue alpha one no transparency and a, a round marker and then we're going to take our health data and we're going to plot it in the red color uh, no transparency and then we're going to put it as a uh, plus marker and let's just uh, see it and see what our plot looks like at the moment so this is our data we have the 100 address points in blue and the health facilities uh, but again, there is no context. We don't know where this is in the world. So uh, for that, I like to use context tiley. This is a great library, which allows us to add a base map from many popular tile mapping services. So I'm going to add the base map here. We're going to say uh, context tiley dot add base map, and we're going to take the OpenStreetMap uh, provider. So let's just run this and see. The first time we run this, it's going to actually download those tiles and cache them locally. So next time it'll go faster. So now you can see this is Washington, D.C. in the U.S., and these are the locations of the points. All right. So now let's see how we can uh, take this and find the nearest health facility to each of these addresses. Uh, here, um, I'm going to standardize the data frame names in case you are trying to do this with your own data and you want to run the code just to make the code simpler. We're going to create an origin GDF variable. This is your origins. So whatever data you're using, you read it using GeoPandas and save this in this variable. We say our addresses are our origins. We're going to pick one column containing unique names. So here in our addresses, you can see we don't have uh, we have this identifier object ID one, which is going to be our unique ID. We're going to say for each of these addresses, this is the, the nearest health facility. Uh, similarly, we're going to take our health facility and we're going to say this is health GDF is our destination and the name is going to be our unique ID containing uh, uh, the name of the health center. So this is what we have here. I'm going to run the cell and now we have uh, origin GDF, destination GDF, and the name columns from each of them. I'm going to just show you what the uh, matrix API looks like. If you go to open out service and look at the API playground for this, you're going to come to the documentation. Uh, this is the, the matrix service. You can see it's a post uh, request. It accepts a post request. Uh, many of you would have worked with get HTTP get request. Uh, here is a post request. Uh, here, we, in, if you use the request module, instead of doing request.get, we have to do request.post. Let's see the documentation. It takes uh, some parameters. The way the API is set up is that you give a list of locations in the locations parameter. So you can see this is a location. We have uh, XY coordinates in WGS84 CRS, and then it's just a list of coordinates. So this is this are the list of coordinates we want distances from, and by default, it is if you don't specify any of the parameter, you're going to get distance between each point to every other point. So if you give hundred points, you're going to get hundred times hundred uh, results. If you have some locations as sources and some as de destinations, you can specify them here. So if you have some sources, you need to give the index of the sources. So you can say I have hundred locations, first fifty are sources, next fifty are destinations, and so on. So we're going to give the index of sources and destinations. And this is where things get a bit tricky uh, to kind of uh, massage your data a little bit to get it in this form so that we can use the API. And there's a limit of about 2,500 uh, queries, uh, the 2,500 pairs that you can compute in one single call. So if you have more than that, just break your data into multiple chunks and call the API multiple times. But in a single uh, call, you can compute about 2,500 pairs of addresses. So here we're going to, uh, let me just show you what our origin GDF looks like. This is our origin GDF. And what we want is the list of locations, right? In XY format. So we have this data frame. I'm going to look at the geometry column. So let's just look at the column. And this is our geometry column, right? So there were 100 points. Uh, x and y so i'm going to if you do dot x you can get a list of x columns 
right? So we have the, um, the series containing all the X's and we can call list of this. And we're going to get a list of those. Okay, so this is how you get a list of lats and long of a data frame. Uh, so here, that's what we're doing. We're going to get the X and Y of a data frame. We're going to use a zip function to create a list of pairwise list of lat long, tat long, and so on. So we have the list of origins and list of destinations. Now, remember the ORS API wants a list of all locations as the uh, series of X, Y coordinates. So we're going to just add them together. And if I show you what this looks like, this will be a list of locations, uh, let long pairs, X, Y pairs. And this is a full list of all the, the locations. Now, uh, some of these are origins, some of these are destinations. So we want to tell ORS API that don't compute distances between each pair, but we know which are the origins, which are the destinations. So we'll say for the whole list, if there were 100 locations here, from zero till the length of origins, how many ever origins we had, that's our origins. And from that to the full list, that is our destination. So we just you kind know, of break this whole list into two parts and have those indices with us. And again, if you are using your own data, this code will do the right thing. You don't need to change anything. You just need to make sure the origin and destination GDFs are assigned the right values. And now we're going to call the API. We're going to use the request library. We've imported that. And we're going to say request.post. This is the URL of the distance matrix API. Remember, open out service API can ha has multiple graphs. So you can compute distances using a variety of mode of transport. Uh, this one is using driving car. You can use walking distance, uh, uh, commercial vehicles, the different uh, uh, URLs for different those, those uh, mode of transport. So here we're going to use a driving car and uh, we're going to do the post. So we're going to have this uh, uh, JSON is the body which is containing our uh, parameters and our headers. Okay, so the header should have the ORS API key along with uh, this other parameters. The body contains these parameters. We have a list of locations, destinations, uh, indices, sources, indices, and then what we want to get out of this. So we just want the distances out of this. So let's run this. And you can see instead of iterating over each and calling this API many times, this will give you the results in a single call. So this is the preferred way if you have more than one distance request to compute. So you can see that this, is, this uh, results out. Let us see what the response is. So I'm gonna just do response.txt to see what we got. You can see we got a lot of distances here. And so we had some dictionary that we got, which is a list of distances between the requested pairs. So let us extract those distances. So we're going to call response to JSON and then this other distances. Now, what you get is for each source, you have distances to all destinations. Okay, so if you had 100 sources, you have 100 list of distances. If you had five destinations, each pair would be five distances. That's what the response is. Now we need to take this and format it according to what we need to do with this. So. Uh, this is the post-processing part. What we're going to do is we know that the for, for each source, we have a number of distances for each of those destinations. And the order of them be in the same order that we requested. So we're going to use this to kind of backtrack and find which are those sources and which are those destinations. So here we're going to iterate over each row of our origin. We know that the index of that would be the same index in the output response that we got. So we extract that list of distances. Once we have the distances, so we know how many destinations were there. Maybe there were 20 destinations. So we have 20 distances and you could get each of them. If you want all of them, you can get that. In our purpose, we want the minimum of distance. So we say, what's the minimum distance uh, that we got? And that's the closest health center. So we get the minimum distance and we want to know which one of those health center was the minimum distance. So we say, what was the index of the minimum distance? And we're going to pick the destination of that index. Okay. So we do this. And finally, we uh, extract the source and destination lat longs. And we get all of this values extracted out of the result. So we get the name of origin, which is the, the unique ID that we had. 
origin x and y coordinates. I like to do it y and x because some, if you want to validate this, you want to paste it into Google Maps or OpenStreetMap, and it's easier to copy paste lat long, and you don't have to flip x, y. So that's why the order I've chosen is y and x, uh, not x and y. Um, so this is the destination and um, the distance. Okay, so we have now, uh, uh, once we run this, we'll have a list called distance matrix, which contains all this data. Let me just show you this distance. So you can see this is a list saying this is the ID of the origin, lat long, um, the destination name, lat long, and the distance in meters. Okay, so this is our output. Uh, it's always good to work with data frames. So we're going to turn this into a data frame. So we'll say pd.data frame, take this list of values, these are the columns, and we're going to get our data frame. Okay, so we have we had 100 sources. So remember, we have now 100 rows in the output, and we have now have the closest health center for each of those addresses with the name, uh, the lat long, as well as the distance to that, right? So now this is great, but again, uh, we want to validate this. So you should definitely take this coordinates, plug it into uh, uh, Google Maps or op uh, OpenStreetMap, check the results look okay. We can also visualize the results correctly. So for visualizing, what I want to do is I want to have a line joining this origin to this destination. So this is a simple Pandas data frame. We're going to turn this into a geo data frame. Uh, and we're going to create a geometry column, which is essentially a line connecting this XY to this uh, XY. And that will show us visually that our results are correct or not. So uh, here I have a function called create line, which takes a row, takes the origin destination, and returns a shapely line string. So um, GeoPandas uses shapely as the geometry engine. So we're going to create a shapely line string for this. And we're going to apply it on the data frame. And we're going to get a new geometry column. So now we have a geometry column of the line. We have the data frame. We can turn it into a geo data frame. A geo data frame is nothing but a data frame with a geometry column and a CRS. We know uh, the CRS is 4326 lat long. And let's run this. And you're going to see the same data frame above, but now it has a geometry column, which is a line connecting the origin and the destination. Okay. And now we can visualize the results. So the same uh, structure as before, we have our uh, matplotlib plot, we plot the addresses, matrix, uh, and uh, the health. So we plot our addresses, health as before. This is the new uh, data frame that we just created. We are just gonna have in black lines with a dot dash line. Yeah? And we're gonna set some parameters here. And let's see what this results look like. So now you can see here we have each of the addresses connected, the straight line connected to the nearest health center. Now the visualization is showing the straight line, but this is actually the distance along the road according to all the turn restrictions and speed limits and all of that following that. And it's going to uh, go to the nearest health center. This is a good quick visualization just to see that you didn't make any mistakes and there are no bugs in your code. So this looks correct to me. If you want to visualize the actual route between those, uh, you'll need to actually uh, take this uh, resulting data frame and then call the open out service API and say, give me the actual uh, path between origin and destination. And if you want to visualize this on a map, we have a tutorial which I teach on our mapping and data visualization class. I'm going to link to that notebook below. So you can say, if I have a results from open out service API with actual route that I want to display on a plot like this, uh, how do I do this? But again, for uh, most of you, just finding this is the critical part, which is the nearest health center. And you were able to get this. And finally, if you just want to save this result, we just take this and say, save it as a geo package. Uh, we we'll take our matrix GDF and save it as a geo package. So uh, this, you'll get a single geo package with this multiple uh, layers. If you want a shape file, you can do the shape file as well. And you can see in the output here, we have a geo package containing three layers, origins, destinations, and the distance matrix uh, from each address to each health center uh, with the closest uh, health center distance. Hope you learned something new. Do try this with your own data set and let me know how it goes. Thank you and see you in the next tutorial.